Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson we will be looking at a coiled wire and what kind of magnetic field or what is the shape of the magnetic field around a coiled wire also called solenoid. So a couple of things that I want to remind you of before we uh, jump into this topic. So current, which is represented by the letter I, always flows from positive to negative. And the magnetic field that is generated by that always goes from north to south. So if we have a coiled wire, it's a little bit funky how the magnetic field um, will look like. Because we know that if we have a straight wire, well, the magnetic field would be looping around the wire, a little bit like in the shape of a donut. But now you have a wire that is coiled onto itself. So what does the field look like, first of all? And secondly, what can we do with that? What, what is the advantage of knowing this? Well, Sometimes what we're going to do is that we're going to coil the wire like here and we're going to put a core, a ferromagnetic core. If you remember, a ferromagnetic substance is a substance that can get magnetized. So it's not a permanent magnet, but it can act like a magnet when it's uh, subjected. So when it's in the presence of a magnetic field. Those ferromagnetic substances can be made of iron, nickel or cobalt. Those are the, the most common substances that are ferromagnetic. So if we coil the wire, we put a core that is ferromagnetic, we can magnetize this, um, this core and then we can use its strength to perform certain tasks. If you want to create one at home, actually, you could test it out. So you need a battery, you need a wire, you can use a nail as a, as a ferromagnetic core and uh, a few paper clips, which we know can be attracted by a field. So when you, uh, when you close your circuit, the electricity will flow, it will create a magnetic field around the wire, and your ferromagnetic core, so your nail, will become magnetized, so it will act as a magnet, and therefore it should attract the paper clips. But if you break your circuit, if you open your circuit, then your nail is no longer magnetized because there's no more current flowing through and your paper clips should not be attracted anymore. Now it is possible that they will stick to the nail for a little while longer because they will retain, remember about retentivity or um, remnants, so they, the, the nail might retain its uh, magnetic force so if you do detach the paper clips from your whole setup, you won't be able to pick them up anymore as long as your wire is not connected to the other end of your battery. So this is the advantage of this. We can switch this magnet on and off. So it can be very useful. If you think of a scrapyard where we, we, um, we basically compress cars, well, they need to pick up the cars and throw them in that big machine that compresses them. And one way to do that is to use a giant electromagnet so they can switch it on and off to pick up the cars and drop the cars in the compressor. Okay, so that's one example. Now before I talk about the magnetic field itself, I want you to do a little bit of arts and crafts. So we're back to our highlighter. We no longer need the positive and negative on it. So you might want to take the same or you want, might want to use another one. Um, what I would have you do now is Hopefully you have either uh, pipe cleaners if you do some arts and crafts at home or you might have some tie wraps. So here I've used some tie wraps. Um, tie two or three together depending on uh, their length and um, to have like a longer wire. This will act as a wire. You want to label one end positive. So it could be that you'll use a piece of tape. It could use that you'll be use a piece of paper and a paper clip like I did. So one end should be positive, one end should be negative. And what we're going to do with that is wrap the uh, the tie wraps as if it was a coil, as if it was a wire. Okay, and we're going to use that to analyze the circuit. So once you have that, let's look at the right hand rule for a solenoid. So your fingers are going to be following the current. So here, the current, the positive end is here, the coil is wrapping from behind the core. And this is going to be important, I'm going to show you different cases, you're going to see why it's important. So the coil is wrapping from behind and at the other end it uh, ends up in front of the core. So your fingers are following the current. So they would be following from the back and wrapping around in the front. Your thumb 
points towards the north of the core. So your core over here, your metallic core, is acting like a magnet. So your thumb is pointing to this end, meaning this is going to be the north of the core. And we know that the magnetic field around the core goes from north to south. So that's what we're trying to determine. This core, this magnet that we've just created, where's the north of it? Of it? Where's the south of it? Okay, so that's how it works. Now, let me show you in a more practical way with our, our little tool there, gadget that we created. How does this work with this situation? So what you would do, so you have the same situation here, the same setup. You have to coil your wire from the back. So you can see here, I started from the back. So my positive end is here. I started from the back and I wrapped it in this direction. And it should end in the front if you're doing it properly. Once you have your setup, which is the same as this setup, you want to do your right hand rule. So you want your fingers to wrap from behind. You're following your wire. The positive end is here. This is where the current originates from. So you want to, your fingers to wrap from behind. You're following literally your wire. So when you close your fingers on your whole uh, device, your fingers are going to wrap in this direction. Where is your thumb pointing? It's pointing towards that end. So that means that this end of your highlighter would be the north and this end would be the south. Now let me grab my pen and label this, make it a little bit more clear. So we know that the north is here because my thumb is pointing towards that end and the south is here. Okay, and do not associate negative with north. It's not always the case. I will show you uh, two different cases afterwards. You'll see it has to do with the way the wire coils, not where the negative end is. Okay, so they're unrelated. North and negative, unrelated. Okay, so this is how you would set it up. Now, if we look at two other cases, and that's where I was saying do not associate the thumb with the negative, the thumb means or determines where the north of your core is. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to demonstrate to you now why I was saying to not associate the two. So this long line, if we recall, represents the positive end of, the power, of our power source. This is the negative. So the wire is coiling by the back. You can see I put dotted lines here, meaning it's hidden in the back. So it's coiling from the back, looping around and finishing in front. So if we coil our wire, we have to coil it from the back. Okay, and it coils around and around and around and it ends up in front over here. So when we uh, wrap our fingers around, our fingers have to wrap from the back and that's how we're going to be holding it essentially. If we do it this way, that means our thumb will be pointing towards the right. So the north end will be here and the south end of the, of the, um, the core sorry, will be here. So that means the field would be going in this direction. Okay. And like this. All right. And if I was to put a compass, let's say over here, which way would it point? It would point in the same direction. It's a little bit small. Sorry, let me do it here. Um, let me do it here, actually. Uh, let me do it here. Okay, this is a good place. So if I put one here, it would point in the same direction as the field. Remember, they always follow the field. They point exactly in the same direction. So if there was one here, it would be following the field. So now it's starting to curve. So it would be like this. Okay. Now, if we look at the second one, so positive is here, negative is here. The wire is coiling from the front this time. So you can see the positives are on the same side. The negatives are on the same side. It's all the same setup, except that the wire is coiling from the front. In this case, here was co coiling from the back. So coiling from the front around and around and around and it ends in the back, okay? So my setup looks the same here. It's coiling from the front, 
and now you can't see because my hand is there, but it's ending up in the back. Okay, so my positives and my my positive and my negative is the same in both cases, but you can see now that I'm following with my fingers, I'm following from the front, right? So I'm showing you how my fingers are wrapping, they're wrapping around this way. So because my hand is wrapping around this way and it's following the wire, it's following the current, now my thumb is pointing towards the other side. So now my north is here, or the north of the core is here, the south is here. So the field is actually turning in the opposite direction. And so that's what I was trying to explain to you. The north and the negative are not related. The north is the north, the negative is the negative. There's no correlation. Actually, what di dictates where the north will be is how the wire is coiling. Is it coiling from the front or is it coiling from starting in the back? And that's what matters. Okay, so do not associate north and negative. There is no link between the two. All right, so these are your two opposite cases showing you exactly what I just talked about. So let's look at this image and let's see if, um, do you think that the compass is going in the right direction? Is it labeled properly? Okay, so let's do the exercise. So you would have to coil your wire starting from the positive end. You coil it in the front. So now you're starting on the right hand side of your core. So you're coiling it from the front, so your current is going like this. So your fingers would be going like this and wrapping around basically in the back, right? So you're holding it, your fingertips are basically in the back. Where is your thumb pointing? Well, your thumb would be pointing towards this end. So this is north, this is south. So that means my field is going around like this. So is my compass pointing in the correct direction? Yes, it's following the field. So this is correct. All right. I was telling you before that we can use this in electromagnets and it's great because we can turn them on and off to perform different tasks. So here you have iron filings. We know that iron is attracted to a magnetic field. So this right now, this electromagnet, you have actually two sets of um, coiled wires. Uh, this electromagnet is off. There's no current flowing through and we know because the iron filings are not attracted to the electromagnet. When we put the, the, the electricity on, well we can see that the electromagnet is picking up all the iron filings. Okay, so that's the advantage of these contraptions. We can turn them, we can turn them on and off uh, at will. Now how can we create a very strong electromagnet or how can we vary the strength of an electromagnet? There are three things we can uh, basically play with. So the first one is the intensity of the current uh, that's flowing through the system. Um, so if we vary I, we can make the electromagnet stronger or weaker. We can add more loops. So the more loops there are, the stronger the electromagnet. And we can play around with the core. Okay, so uh, iron, nickel, and cobalt don't necessarily have all the same strength. Uh, maybe we want to make a mixture. So depending on what the core is made of, um, you can see some cores are made of, let's say, aluminum. That's not as strong as iron, nickel, and cobalt. So depending on what the core is made of, it will be stronger or weaker depending on our need. Okay, so we can play with these three factors. Now, if we actually play with all three, we'll make it even stronger. Okay, so their effects are multiplied. And actually, when we say multiplied, we can kind of calculate the factor by which it's multiplied. So if we want to compare two solenoids, we can do so by doing the following. So if I look at this example, it has one loop, two loops, three, four, five loops, and it has a current of two amps. If I multiply those two, I get a number. This is basically a factor. So this would be labeled as a factor of 10. 5 loops times 2 amps gives me 10. If I had another solenoid, another electromagnet, with a factor of 5, let's say, so if I change the current for 1 amp, well, it would be weaker. A factor of 5 obviously is weaker than a factor of 10. Okay, so that's how you can basically guesstimate which uh, electromagnet is stronger or weaker, is by multiplying the loops by the current flowing through that electromagnet. And if they're equal, then you look at the nature of the core. 
you can compare uh, the cores. If something is made of alumin aluminum versus iron, obviously the iron core will be stronger if everything else is equal. So that's the way we can evaluate how strong, relatively speaking, how strong an electromagnet may be. And that concludes the lesson and actually the chapter on electricity. So if you have questions, uh, please reach out. And otherwise, I will see you for your next lesson. And until then, take care.